The Bible commands us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 to give a reasonable defense of our faith. This episode will prove that both the Bible and the spirit of prophecy teach young earth creationism and that we must trust God by faith. Biblical creation is the teaching that the earth is approximately 6,000 years in age and that this age approximate is confirmed by both the teachings of scripture and the inference of science. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 31 teach that God created the world in six literal days. Genesis chapter 2 verses 2 through 3 teach that God rested on the literal seventh day and established the pattern found in the commandment of Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11. The spirit of prophecy nicely summarizes this teaching in Testimonies to Ministers, page 136, paragraph 2. She says, God made the world in six literal days, and on the seventh literal day he rested from all his work which he had done and was refreshed. The Bible makes it plain that God created the earth and that the entire universe, rather than being a cosmic coincidence, is actually the product of the intelligent forethought of the biblical God. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 33 verses 4 through 9, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Further light is given in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17, where the scripture says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. The Word of God teaches that all three members of the Godhead, in an effort of loving cooperation, were involved in the creation of our home, planet Earth, the other celestial bodies in our galaxy, and the entirety of the universe. One verse spoken by our God is enough to generate all of space, time, matter, and energy. Our personal lives are so deeply intertwined with our Creator, so let's take a look at the role of each member of the God family in the work of creation. We see the Father in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, which reads, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We see the Son, Jesus, Christ, involved in the work of creation. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 17, it explains it like this, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Finally, we see the Holy Spirit involved, moving on the face of the waters. Psalm chapter 104, verse 30, beautifully puts it like this, Thou sendeth forth thy spirit, they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth.
the Holy Bible gives us an accurate and thrilling account of God's creative endeavors. The first ten verses of the first chapter of Genesis chronicle God's actions in creating the earth. Verse 11 and 12 detail God creating vegetation, while verses 21 through 25 record God creating the diverse animal kinds. At last, God creates the human race, starting with the first man and the first woman in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. The Bible says that God's deity is revealed by his creation. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God's creation also reveals his power. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26 and 28 puts it this way, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out the host by their number. He calleth them all by name and by the greatness of his might, for he is strong in power, and not one faileth. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. The glory of our God is also revealed in nature. King David wrote in Psalm chapter 19 and verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Another aspect of God's character, namely his goodness and his love, are revealed by what we find in his creation. To quote David again, He, God, loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. That's Psalm chapter 104, verse 24. It says the same thing, stating that the very wisdom of God is revealed by what he did in nature. It says, O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Finally, the sovereignty for the just authority of God is made plain to us by his creation. The message of biblical creation, according to the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, illustrates how we must be born again. When we look at Psalm chapter 51, verse 10, or Job chapter 25, verse 4, we find that the doctrine of biblical creation is foundational to the teaching that we must have clean hearts and be justified by faith. Finally, understanding the creation connection will prompt us to look forward to the new heavens and the new earth and hasten the coming of Jesus Christ by overcoming sin by His grace. See Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17 and 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 11 and 13. Solomon teaches in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, that we must remember the Creator in the days of our youth, so we can lead fulfilling lives. The prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 38, states that we must recognize that God is everlasting, never weary, and all-knowing. Isaiah goes on to write in the 15th verse of the 43rd chapter of his book that God is our Creator and our King, so He's the one that makes the rules, not us. This parallels to what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 verse 25 about how we mustn't put the things of this world in the place of God in our hearts. Why? Because He's the only one who is worthy of our adoration and our praise. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19 brings us to a more somber but hopeful note, because we can remember that God is a faithful creator 
even when we go through suffering. Reading in Psalms chapter 138 and verse 8, we find that being that God is our creator, by trusting in his mercy, he will perfect our characters. We should give thanksgiving and praise to Jesus, who watches over us as a loving shepherd. After all, he created us. We didn't evolve from Ponsco. The Bible nowhere exactly gives the Earth's age in millennia, centuries, decades, years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, or seconds. However, when we look at the history of biblical figures, we can deduce a general time frame. There are about 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham. There are about 2,000 years from Abraham to Christ. And there are about 2,000 years from the time of Christ to today. Therefore, the earth is only about 6,000 years using the Bible's timeline. There are a few places where the spirit of prophecy teaches that the earth is only about 6,000 years old. Check out this quote from Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, page 92. It says, the world is now only about 6,000 years old. Ellen White, in her beautiful book on the life of Christ called Desire of Ages, wrote, For 6,000 years, faith has builded upon Christ. For 6,000 years, the floods and tempests of satanic wrath have beaten upon the rock of our salvation, but it stands unmoved. That's Desire of Ages page 413, paragraph 4. Thank God for Jesus Christ, the Savior of humanity. The human race was created by the Lord and is not the accidental byproduct of the evolutionary process. The Bible says that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. The Bible also explains the origin of women in Genesis chapter 2 verses 22 through 23, which says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Ellen White has another very beautiful thought on mankind's origins. In her book, Patriarchs and Prophets, she wrote, After the earth, with its teeming animal and vegetable life, had been called into existence, man, the crowning work of the Creator, and the one for whom the beautiful earth had been fitted up, was brought upon the stage of action. To him was given dominion over all that his eye could behold. For God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over all the earth. So God created man in his own image. Male and female created he them. Here is clearly set forth the origin of the human race, and the divine record is so plainly stated that there is no occasion for the erroneous conclusions. God created man in his own image. Here is no mystery. There is no ground for the supposition that man was evolved by slow degrees of development from the lower forms of animal or vegetable life. Such teaching lowers the great work of the Creator to the level of man's narrow, earthly conceptions. Men are so intent upon excluding God from the sovereignty of the universe that they degrade man and defraud him of the dignity of his origin. 
He who set the starry worlds on high, and tinted with delicate skill the flowers of the field, who filled the earth and the heavens with the wonders of his power, when he came to crown his glorious work, to place one in the midst to stand as ruler of the fair earth, did not fail to create a being worthy of the hand that gave him life. The genealogy of our race, as given by inspiration, traces back its origin not to a line of developing germs, mollusks, and quadrupeds, but to the great creator. Though formed from the dust, Adam was the son of God. That's Patriarchs and Prophets, page 44 and paragraph 3. The human race was made on the sixth day of creation. However, the creation week did not end on the sixth day. On the seventh day, while not engaging in any more creative acts, God rested as a pattern for his children. Jesus said in Mark chapter 2 and verse 27 that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seal of God. In the Bible, a seal has three parts. That's the name, that's the title, and that's the territory of the authority. That's Esther chapter 3, verses 12 to 13, Esther chapter 8, verse 8, and 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 7 through 10. The Bible teaches in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, and Hebrews 10, 16, that the seal of God is within the law of God. And we look at the Ten Commandments we find that the only commandment that has the three parts of God's seal is the Sabbath commandment. That's found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. It has God's name, which is the Lord. It has God's title, which is thy God, the creator or maker, and his territory, the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in the midst. The Bible also says in several other places that the Sabbath is the seal or the sign of God like in Exodus chapter 31, verse 13, and Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 12 and 20. The Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 says, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Jesus, the Savior of all mankind, declared himself to be the Lord of the Sabbath. In Mark chapter 2 and verse 28, thus we can fully trust in Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath, and the only mediator between God and men. We pray that you enjoyed the video and that you were blessed by its content. For more videos like this and other faith-building topics, please subscribe to Christ Jesus Ministries YouTube channel. For more information on how you can get free downloads of Ellen White's writings and on the Ten Commandments, please see the links included in the description of this video, where you'll also find a free study guide to correspond with the contents of this video. God bless you and your loved ones, and remember, the truth saves.